Hey everybody, how's it going? So yesterday I did a video on the GoPro Hero 7 and I, what I did is I went over the exact process of what it is like to live stream from this device. I show you from beginning to end exactly how well the GoPro Hero 7 works. Unfortunately, I made a really large mistake when I uploaded this video. I uploaded it around 10, 20 minutes after I had uploaded another video. The way Google's algorithm and YouTube's AI works is if there's anything they hate and want to punish, it's people publishing content to their platform. So if I upload two videos in a very short time period, one will be promoted and the other one will be essentially hidden and nobody will ever see it. As you can see with this one, this video damn near has Eli numbers. Like 9,600 views. I mean, I got, this video has as many views in a day as Eli's Daily Blob does in a week. And that is just unacceptable. But what I wanted to do here is I wanted to expound upon this video where I talk about the GoPro Hero 7. And I want to talk about some other things I find interesting about them as a company. So, in this video, I'm showcasing that after 33 minutes, I, it takes that long to get the GoPro to actually do a live stream and work. It is one of the buggiest, awful devices I have ever used. Now, the reason that I enjoy doing reviews like this is that there are many reviews that talk about the features of the device or the camera quality or all that, but I don't see a lot of reviews that go into things like just the basic usability. What is it like from the moment I turn on the device? And let me just show you what it's like without doing a bunch of fancy editing, and you decide what you think of the user experience. I also understand that since I do videos like that, I am never going to get a company in my lifetime to send me a device for review or ask me to review a product because they see this. Um, I understand why a review channel would not post this type of content or post this about the user experience. Because in the beginning I was wondering, why has nobody gone over the fact that this product doesn't work? And it's because if you do go over that, even if that reviewer doesn't have a relationship with GoPro or any one particular vendor, if other vendors see that, they're going to look at that and go, oh, wow, he went in on our product. He didn't just show the, the cons and the negatives. He actually showed that it doesn't work. We can't send him something. And then they will never get products for free to review ever again, and their channel will go to the shitter. Luckily, I don't make money off of reviewing products. and I don't really have to care. So I like being able to post a video from start to finish just showing you the basics of the user experience of a product. Let's just see if this thing does what it actually says that it'll allow you to do. So I enjoy doing that video. Now, there's another thing that I wanted to talk about that just is even worse with the GoPro Hero 7. It's almost as if Apple does something dumb. GoPro walks up to them and doesn't just say, hold my beer. GoPro walks up to Apple and is like, no, hold my beer no, and fucking brew my beer, bitch. They out-Appled Apple, and that that is just... <laughs> It takes a lot of effort to out-Apple Apple. So what do I mean? Well, the GoPro Hero 7 does not have a microphone in, and it also has a microphone that sounds like complete garbage. And there are many people who talk about this on YouTube. I, Justine, actually has an interesting video on just how awful the, uh, the GoPro microphone sounds. It's a really bad, awful microphone. And unlike many cameras that have an audio in, the GoPro does not have an audio in. So the only way to get audio into the GoPro is through the USB-C port. Now you may think, well, no problem, right? I'll just get myself a USB-C audio dongle and I'll be on my way. I'll be set, right? Wrong. Here's where the Apple part comes in. So remember when I did that review of the MacBook in 2016 where I showcased that it didn't work with a third-party dongle? Not only did Apple take away all your ports, but they made it so that if you want to actually have those ports back, you must buy the dongle through them. I showcased how a $35 dongle worked totally fine with a Dell XPS that was right next to me. It was able to do everything from basic connectivity to high-end raw video capturing and encoding at 250 megabytes a second from an HDMI capture card. But the Apple product would only work with their own Snowflake dongle. You could not buy a different dongle. Many people criticize my choice of dongle, and many people criticize saying, well, there's going to be Wi-Fi interference as per the Intel specification. It's not going to work, blah, blah, blah totally ignoring the fact that I showed you all of that working on a Dell XPS that was right next to me. But I digress. So GoPro, very similar to Apple, has made it so that their dongle is the only one that will work with the device. So this website, which you should check out, I, 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 we've been going through this, they have some really cool write-ups, it's called datapro.net. They did a teardown of the GoPro USB-C mic adapter. Now at the end of it, they says, is there any alternative? to the GoPro USB-C mic adapter. Not really. As of the Hero 5, the GoPro itself performs an authenticity check on any accessories plugged in to determine if they're authorized to communicate with the device. While non-GoPro USB-C to 3.5mm adapters exist, 
they won't be recognized as an authorized accessory by the GoPro. Or I repeat, it will check on any accessories plugged in to determine if they're authorized to communicate with the device. So I said, fine, fuck it, I'll buy your goddamn adapter. I buy the adapter, it works, and I was using it with a Sennheiser MKE 600 microphone. I like to do videos where I talk about things while I'm on my bike. I was talking about why I dislike the tariff policy, how the tariff policy related to me selling quicks. Just every now and then I'll do a random bike stream on my other channel. I have the GoPro mounted on the bike. I got this nice cold shoe mount case that allows me to have a cold shoe mount on top of the mic. I'd have the MKE 600 pointed at me, and I got pretty good sound. The MKE 600 was really good at getting rid of the wind. It's a bit of a big microphone, but I already had it. Uh, it was sent to me by a fan as a gift. I think it was, yeah, Civil Lizard sent that to me. Thank you, Civil Lizard, four years ago. And I've been using it ever since. It's a really nice microphone, it, and it works. But the dongle died because it's a dongle. One of the reasons that many people don't like dongles is because dongles are not just that they're expensive and they're inconvenient and you have to carry something because there's no ports in the device which you're likely to forget to bring with you, but it's also because dongles break. It's another link in the chain. A dongle is a wire, and wires break. So a few months in, my $50 GoPro dongle broke. So I said, fine, fuck it, you win, I will buy another dongle. But here's where GoPro tells Apple, not only are you going to hold my beer, you're going to fucking brew my beer, bitch, because we're going to one-up you. And that's really hard to one-up Apple. So if you take a look, let's say that I decide you win, I will buy your goddamn snowflake dongle. If you check here on shop.gopro.com, it is out of stock. If you check in Best Buy, it is out of stock. If you check on walmart.com, it's out of stock. If you check on target.com, it's out of stock. If you check on sweetwater.com, it's out of stock. If you check on B&H Photo and Video, it's out of stock. If you check on Adorama, it's out of stock. If you check Full Compass, it's out of stock. If you check Tackle Warehouse, it is out of stock. If you check jegs.com, it is out of stock. You get the idea here. So Apple made a snowflake dongle, but at the very least, they, you know, it's winter outside, they sell it to you, it's a nice little snowflake dongle. GoPro makes a snowflake dongle, but it's a, it's a fucking melted snowflake dongle. It's a, it's a snowflake dongle that you put on the table in the middle of summer. It doesn't exist. So if you want to purchase one of these, you can't. Now, yeah, you can probably get it on the 21st, but I've been looking for one of these dongles for the past three weeks. It's not been available. So not only did you manage to make a camera with a built-in mic that sounds like shit, no audio input, a dongle that works to give you audio input, but only if it's your Snowflake $50 one, but you can't even stock the goddamn dongle. Any one of those items by themselves would be forgivable, but you combine all of them together and you get a company that so hates its users and its customers, I think they hate them even more than Apple does. Now, I was kind of wondering, when you combine the fact that they cannot even get something basic like audio right, they can't even keep their dongles in stock, and if you watch the stream, which I strongly suggest you do, it's a damn good video if I'll say so myself, that they, the basic tenets of live streaming, the basic tenets of connecting one device to another device, seven generations in as a flagship company in the action cam space, they cannot get that right to the point where it takes 33 minutes from the moment that I turn on the camera to the moment I can start a live stream. I'm wondering to myself, this company can't possibly, how the hell is a company like this stay in business? How does a company like this make money? What? I learned something when I did a little bit of my research because my question was, how does a company like this make money? Apparently, they don't. If you take a look here at the, their 10Ks, you'll see that the net income for 2016 they lost $419 million. In 2017, they lost $183 million. And in 2018, they lost $109 million. So I have some advice for the people at GoPro. If you would like to stop losing hundreds of millions of dollars of your investors' money each year, because I do intend to start shorting you. A, if you're going to create a device with a terrible microphone, have a port for sound input. B, if you're not going to have a port for sound input, at the very least, don't require that you buy your special dongle to make it work. C, if you're going to require that people buy your special dongle to make it work, fucking stock the dongle. D, if you are going to create a device that has an operating system for it to work, make sure the operating system actually works. The amount of times that I have managed to crash a GoPro, just not even live streaming, just turning it on, hitting record, hitting stop record is insane. It is absolutely ridiculous. It takes nothing for this device to freeze. And every aspect of the user experience with this product 
has been a punch in the face and a kick in the balls from a company whose upper management I can only imagine used to work at Apple and is trying to compete with them for the device that hates the customer the most. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you used a GoPro? Have you tried to live stream with a GoPro? Have you tried to get a good sound out of a GoPro? Have you tried to find a snowflake dongle for your GoPro? What's it been like? That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.